welcome back to the For You podcast today. I got a very special guest, the Mousepad King going? himself. <laughs> What's Aiden. going on? Um, how are you to- doing today? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? I- I'm doing fantastic. I'm, a- I'm excited to talk to you. Like I said before, um, there's not a lot of people doing what you're doing. And that's kind of why I want to pick your brain is because it's an alternate thought of process that you have going on in your brain. W- yeah. What's uh what's the origin of wanting to you know create mouse pads well so okay so it kind of went it started off like you know like i kind of wanted to be unique and like build something of my own that had my own logo on it hence you know like why i have it here Mm -hmm. i mean i wanted something that would fit my setup but have my logo on it right Mm -hmm. and i wanted it custom to me because i was going to go for like seven wars seal of approval and i thought it'd be really cool to have my own mouse pad that would like match everything that i'm working on from like from one thing to another i wanted to match every single thing and then so then around that time stream elements came out with their mouse pad and i'm very sure you know of it now uh but back then it was it was a prototype beta thing that they let me into early and i ended up becoming their first sell like their their top seller like right away like within the first two weeks so then i i i sat down and i was kind of like well they're kind of just doing like what I could do, but I bet I could do it better. Like I could probably just take it and do my own thing with it. Um, and at first it was like, it was dope because I didn't have to touch it. Right. But the profit margins weren't there and the quality wasn't there. There was fraying and name cutting on the sides and just a lot of quality issues that didn't go along with what I, what I needed. Um, and so, so then from there, I kind of like had a pivotal moment, like, you know what, I'm going to f- find a manufacturer I'm going to do it all myself. I'll have my dad help me. We'll box them all up and we'll sell them. And so it it took off. We did a creator collection with Jake Logan and Matt McCaff. Um, we did that one first in September. And it was a huge success. It sold out in the first day. And uh, that was after like I, I boxed them all up. And it, it went really well. And then, um, so then I planned for October and I was like, okay, we got to go bigger this time. Like, I don't think I could pass a thousand. I don't think I could sell out a thousand, but dude, I kicked on that stream 15 minutes before the drop and we sold out in nine minutes, all a thousand. And I was mm-hmm. just sitting there like, wow, like what just happened? Like, not only that, like I was getting a bunch of subs on stream and it, the support, we hit like a max of like 700 viewers during that stream. Like it just... It was nuts. The, the amount of exposure and support that I got from from doing this whole thing by myself and other creators that I'm working with in the future, like literally changed the whole thing for me. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like how it went. Um, and now I kind of make it like in August after the first mouse pad store sold out and I knew I had a thing for September and they sold out. I realized like that's when I could go full time with streaming. Cause I could do this on the side and still be able to, you know, pay my rent and, and pay my bills. And so it, it was really dope. Um, it was a really dope experience for sure. Yeah. I like, I like the idea of doing exclusive stuff that like the, by the month, month by month basis. I like that yeah. a lot. Cause it makes, it makes me feel as, um, you know, but for the viewers, I do have one of your mouse pads and it makes me feel cool to have something that who knows if that design is going to come back or that colorway is going to come back or anything. It's kind of like the, like at the beginning of Fortnite when the item shop and stuff like that, like if you had a skin that other people didn't have, like you just didn't know when that stuff was going to come back. Yeah. And so, and that's also kind of like the, the rate I have to go because there is so many of you guys of, of the of the fans and people that you know want a mouse pad but like i do this out of my garage so mm-hmm. the fact is is like i mean i can even send you some pictures but like my whole side of the garage is full with a thousand and so like this like that whole thing was just like surreal that it takes me it takes me like 20 hours to box them all up and 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 make sure that all the quality is there and right and the fact that you guys like them sold it out in like nine minutes just like completely changed my aspect on this. Like I can't keep up with the demand if I had a full store open. Like I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I have to make it a drop base. There's no way impossible. Like there's no way to balance streaming and balance everything. My time is very valuable now. And um, and and to to waste 15 hours on, you know, something I could be doing for YouTube or you know or for TikTok. And I I, I think you're starting to kind of get in this too where it's, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes. 
you're always in meetings, you're always, you know, either working on this, you're always trying to fix something else. There's always something you're doing. And it's like, you know, I haven't taken a break off in like five months since I started this whole thing. You know, it's very, it's very taxing. It takes a special kind of person that can really sit down and motivate themselves every day to get up and do these kind of things. Um, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I've had a, I have a couple conversations with a lot of people, um, about who who's this made for and it takes like you said a special kind of person it's not made for everyone this type of uh like yeah you can say stress and people are gonna you know knock it for it being video games and streaming or whatever but it is stress like we take this serious we put a lot of pride and weight into our content Mm -hmm. and it will get stressful when you put that much pressure on yourself and yeah, and and also like this is another coming down the thing. I know people just see me as someone that streams and a, a personality on TikTok, but um, you know, running, being a business owner on the back end of it, and um, because like for me, I know I'm not just streaming and making money, and 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 I think a lot of people can start to contest this. Like people are starting full blown brands, which is a hard thing to do um, to begin with. Most businesses are not even profitable in your for in your first year. Um, in, in the margins that I'm hitting for a, a 20 year, a 21 year old person, like, like it's, it doesn't, I've never even thought it would get to this point, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it gets to this point where you have to realize like, you know, you either have one shot or you just fucking let it go by you and you're either going to take that or you're not. And like over the last five months, I've literally went from having 2000 followers to 190,000 and now started my own brand and we, you know, we're, we just hit 15,000 on stream. And so we just on Twitch and everything, we've just been really rolling with it. Um, and you know, not, I have, I've streamed every single day since, uh, September and since October, actually beginning of August, um, when I went full time for phase five, um, after I went full time, it kind of, be- it kind of pushed me like more. Like I felt like now I've got nothing to go back on. I'm not going back to college this semester. I'm not, I'm not going for it because I know that I can do this. Right. And that's, and I think a lot of people realize like, Oh, you're a gamer. Yeah. You're cool. Cause you stream, but they don't realize like I put 15 hours of work a day. Like I, as soon as I get up, I make the two TikToks for the day. I get up I either do a morning stream or I do a night stream. If I do a morning stream, then I know that I have less time in the night in re- vice versa. And like with the mouse pads when on cold war, right. I did it the cold war weekend is when I did it. Right. So I was doing two streams a day like in the morning and at night. And I was doing like, I got up, I did like a hundred mouse pads, went and streamed, came back, did like 300, 400, went back. And I did this over a whole weekend and just like grinded the shit out of it till like 3 a.m. Um, and then that's how I packaged all the mouse pads uh, for the last drop is I just did it that way. Um, <laughs> that was a lot, a lot of work, but it was well worth it because of everybody supporting the stream and supporting me. And, um, you know, that's kind of where, it went went through um yeah yeah i think like how much you do and how much you put in really attests yeah like i say a lot um passion shines through and i see that with you that you're passionate about everything that you're doing even even you saying like just the sheer amount of effort that goes into one of these drops and that you're doing it all yourself it's not a it's not a drop ship you you're holding the inventory you're you're taking it and shipping it out which is absolutely mind-blowing to me because that's something (laughs) yeah it's mind-blowing to me too man i i like i'm getting you know you know my my dad and everything i mean he does a lot of work too i mean my dad does help me a lot um and i mean a lot of people think it's only me, but yeah, my dad helps me yeah. and I, I make sure that I pay him as much as I can, you know, <laughs> like I'm not going to just not pay him. Um, my dad does a lot of work and does help me out a lot of the time. And so I try my best to like get back when I can. Um, and yeah. And, and it really comes down to like how patient you are and, and if you're able to really adapt in the industry. Right. And, um, with with me and with other creators that I talk to on a day-to-day basis, making friends in the industry is really how you how you grow and um making friends with people and like expanding your horizon than just being a tech talker or just being a you know uh, 
a gamer or just being a personality like you got to do it all like i don't think people understand the the um the pressure that gets put on to creators i think i think this is oh, also yeah. like a good topic because um like right now a lot of people like tiktok has kind of become negative in this last couple weeks i don't know why uh there's a lot of hate slash like demotivation on tiktok and and i think this comes down to the creator fund ever since they added this creator fund a lot of creators are saying it, it does work some creators it doesn't it's it's a mess um but at the same time if it, it really takes a special kind of person to keep posting every day even no matter what views you get that's still an eyeball on your channel that's still a you know a viewer that may buy a mouse pad from me that is still someone that may come into my stream and give me a sub that is someone that may come and even just follow me on every social media either way that all helps me no matter what and if you look at it that way even if a video does bad you still have eyeballs on the video either way yeah. the fact that you're blessed to be in the position you are and and this is a big overcome like thing to overcome as a creator especially ones that have bigger numbers that have lower numbers as their viewers as their, as their videos right um and i think a lot of different people touch on that but it's it's definitely interesting my thought process is um on videos that don't do as well or kind of i think a a, a big thing is coming back from that video that doesn't do well because a lot of people get really demotivated take you know, a week off or something like that. Coming back, bouncing back from that video that doesn't do well, like shrugging it off. It, it's you just giving yourself more potential and more opportunity to have like a video that does better. It doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it literally comes down like with 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 TikTok especially. It really comes down to time of post and hashtags and like algorithm. It it's it's literally like finding gold nowadays like back then it was easier because tiktok was kind of booming in summer and there weren't people as busy because quarantine and we had like we're you know booming stock market for tiktok mm -hmm. right even though that's still booming now and it's still a great platform and it still has a lot of great places to go we're only at the beginning of it mm -hmm. and the people that are at the beginning of it right now are riding an easy trend wave right now that are able to push their brand an example is bella and people that just kind of come out of the word works out of nowhere, like like literally come out of nowhere, right? Um, and that's what we see on TikTok right now is literally that that exact thing, is we're making internet celebrities overnight. People are able to transform a whole from working a nine to five nine to five to being like an actual creator and being uh, an influencer, and people like them. Like that is a completely one eighty for everyone that is in this space now. Um, and short form content is the future, like hundred percent. I don't think that people even care to watch a 12, 15 minute YouTube video anymore um, yeah. because they have TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to have a team for that. You have to have editors and, and to do it yourself. Yeah, you could edit your own videos, but dude, it gets to a point where you don't have enough hours in the day. Like for me, like I'd rather just stream, have my TikTok editor make a TikTok and not even post on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Unless unless my editor I pay them and they and they do it, that's different. But like for me, it's like I don't even see worth in YouTube unless I really like make a dope ass video just for fun, then I see it worth it. But like in the long run, I would invest more in TikTok and short form content because there's going to be apps in the future they're gonna blow up again. Same with Vine, same with everything. Even if TikTok died, I wouldn't be as stressed because I have Twitch to fall back on. I have my community that I fall back on. Um and and it doesn't it it doesn't phase me anymore. I know that people know who I am. And if people are following me on TikTok and they love my content on TikTok, they will know how to find me. They'll know my name, they'll know me. And that that's the least of my worries, right? Um so I think that's also like a good topic as well. Like there's so many topics we could talk about, um, but I'm going to let you take the direction of this obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I, I do want to touch on how, how has your, cause this all kind of seemed to happen fast for you. Um, yeah. I probably seem like a blink of an eye for you just to kind of <laughs> go through everything, but how, how has your, your headspace been throughout all this? Is it, is there ever times where, where Aiden's down in bed and just kind of thinking negatively on, on things? Or are you a pretty um, content and happy person? 
So, I mean, so, I mean, there's everyone, everyone's going to be in their fuels. I feel like off stream, I don't think people realize how much stress I'm always under currently. Like, like, I feel like people don't understand more or less. Like, like, um, from when I get up, I'm making content from when I, like, from when I get up to when I sleep, I'm either a, I'm getting up and I'm completely putting all my time into this. I either do a morning stream for the homies that are at school. I do like, you know, the TikTok content. I try to push out two to three a day. On top of that, I have brands that I have to work with and do videos for and and the mouse pads on the side. Like the, um, it's all about time efficiency. And if you can get that down, then like your time management and your health will be better. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I feel like there are times where I feel like, damn, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. But then there's times that I feel like, wow, I love doing this, right? Yeah. I think it's like any job you have. Like, you realize that you're going to have those struggles, and it's all about moving through them. Like, an example is like, I would much rather be doing what I'm doing now than I would be going back to Whole Foods or going back to Fire Up or going back to where I worked before. Like, I would, I love what I do now, right? Mm -hmm. And even if, like, even if I get it and sad about what I'm doing or I have, a, like, you know, a bad day or something – it definitely shows I'm very transparent. Um, but like my viewers come in and they're like, they're positive on a day that I feel shitty. Right. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll come in and they'll either donate or they'll like show their, their two cents about how did they care? Yeah. And that's kind of mainly what gets me through stuff. because I know that like, if I can stay strong for them, then they can stay strong for me. Yeah. And, and that, mo that motivates me more to be a better creator and be in this mind space and, try to like you know further my content while trying to keep a good community under my hands um you know and there's not really a time that i'm like super sad where i don't want to do anything i always know that even if i'm sad like i still can push through whatever i'm doing like if it's you know a tiktok video or if it's you know something else i've always got that like mentality under my belt i know i can do it you know what i mean mm -hmm. there's no other option i, I don't have no choice you know i, I don't want to go back to school and I, I don't think it's for me but I love doing what I'm doing now because the only math I need is to count money and, and, and stocks <laughs> and figure out where I need to go with shit. Yes. You know, it's, it's literally just like you got to realize like at one point, you know, you have to prove everybody wrong. And if you don't, then you're going to live your life hating what you're doing. And if you don't like that's that's fine. And you can go to college for four years and be what you want to be. But at the same time, there's always that part of me that was like, I need to I need to do something like Five years ago, I was literally talking about this somebody with this somebody this morning, like literally this morning. Um, you know, it was one of my exes that texted me and was like, "Oh, I saw you on this and this," and it was like, "Look, I told you five years ago, like this was back when we dated five years ago. Um, that's when I was in high school. <laughs> um, but you know, I we I talked to her. I was like, you know, remember when I told you like." I was going to be like big on Twitch or getting there on Twitch and I was going to be able to be able to live off of it. I was going to be able to go full time. I knew that there was a day that was going to come and like I knew it was going to happen. I didn't know how to get there or how it was going to come, but TikTok handed me the platform and I realized where I was at and what I was doing and I took it and just ran with it. And now here I am fast forward five months later you know, I'm I'm blessed to have the fan base I have. We sold, you know, the two mouse pads drops back to back and sold out in nine minutes. Like that that's unbelievable. Um, you know, and that again, that is like, you know, still to this day, unbelievable. Um so yeah, to answer that question, you know, there's there's good days and bad days, but at the same time you have to kind of realize like you can prove anybody wrong. You just have to stick your mind to it and do it. Um it's not always going to be easy. I know it's kind of cliche and everybody says that, but it's very, very true. Um, yeah, because there's days that, I mean, I've been streaming since 2013 and I'm finally getting like a little bit of traction here. Um, and I'm finally able to take myself and move myself forward um, from being this, this like nine hour streams a day kind of thing. Like I, I, I realized that wasn't the way to do it, you know? Now, what? if I would have realized this like years ago, right? I would mm -hmm. be where I'm at today. I'd be even double my size or triple my size if, if I had realized what I what I could what my potential was first. Mm -hmm. um, so there, yeah. there's something in there that I want to talk about. People mm. don't realize that we've been doing this for a lot. Like I'm I'm not a new creator. I am not. I've been on YouTube. Um, I had a channel before of 
from 2012 but then like my channel that i'm on now is from like 2014 2015 uh time zone or time frame and i get a lot of dms and I, i'm sure you get a, a, a ton too um asking tips on how to do something or you know can you give me a shout out or any of this and it, it's not I'm going to give advice and then you can add on to it. It's not, there's no overnight success. Like everyone who's done this, who's had like that big jump has been building this kind of launch platform to get to that point. Like they deserve that because they put in that work and then finally it's catching up, you know, in, in a big jump of numbers, but it, it, there's just no starting today and getting big tomorrow. It's just not like that. It, it, and yeah, um, this is kind of a problem I see on TikTok as well. Um, I think the kid, the the amount of kids that are kind of, I don't think they, um, what's the word? I mean, they don't understand. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not trying to fault them, uh, fault them for that. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no I, I mean, neither. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but if you think about it, like right now, right? Any comment section you go into, there's at least one kid asking for something for free. Mm -hmm. There's one kid asking for handouts, people asking for this and that. And I don't think they get that we have worked so hard to be in this position and that I just try to motivate them and say, you know, I'll do a giveaway sometime. And if you want to be a part of that, that's more than welcome to. Um, that's, hence why I do the mousepad giveaways to really show back that I give back to the community. Yeah. I mean, I give I give away one. I do all like so. Say I have like six designs. I give away one of each. Yeah. And I do it on stream, and I all they have to do is follow my Twitch channel. That's all I have, right? And, and, and there's not like a like a thing like that. Like I just literally say like you know if you want a giveaway or you want free stuff, I do giveaways every once in a while, you know, for the new drop. And if you don't get the giveaway, then you can go on the drop. You know, it's it's very similar. But like with this whole thing. And I think people don't understand that there's a there's a fine balance between, you know, being a small creator, having one viewer, and then having 20 viewers, and having 50 viewers, and having 100 viewers. There's a, there's a milestone for every viewer account. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to start realizing that if you have 20 viewers, you're able to monetize that. You yeah. are able to make a decent living out of 30, 40 people. See, because if they – because this is – this is Again, like touching on success, if every person gave you one dollar out of that forty people, you'd have forty dollars. Now, say they did that every day of the month, and you have forty bucks a day. That's about half a work day. That's a part time job, alone with forty people. So when all these people come to me and say, "Oh, I've had twenty viewers. Oh, I've had ten viewers. Oh, I've had four viewers, and I'm not growing," it's like I have also touched on this on my video as well on YouTube. Um, I did like a how to grow video mm -hmm. um and that's usually where i refer people if they ask me like oh I, I don't know why i don't know how to grow like i don't know what i'm doing wrong um and i literally tell them make friends half of the way half of what i've done like literally half of everything that i've done right now is because i've made friendships and if you didn't have those friendships i would be nowhere right now i would not be anywhere an example like carter carter pcs i made friends with him like we we <laughs> like there's there's ways that you start out right when you meet people that you can like propel yourself even further and meeting not not to say to use them or ask anything from them but if you are giving back to them they're eventually going to give back to you in the same way and i feel like if i do that for everybody then i'm winning right then everybody else around me is winning i'm winning and they're winning and it's a win win you never want to be in a position where you're asking somebody for something and they're losing, but you're winning because yeah. that, that, that's never going to work. Nobody's going to want to take the loss on something to give you something for free. Who cares? I don't know you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's also like, they, they don't think that cause they're kids or they're not mature enough to understand that. Or, you know, it just depends. Um, or they're cloud chasing. Who knows? Who knows what the deal is? Right. But yeah, it really yeah. depends. I, I just, it, it it's really, it's almost like I don't understand as well, like just kind of on the same level that they are because I, I never had really seen anything like that before. Because like when I was coming up, it was, it seemed, I was pretty in a bubble of the Call of Duty space. I was, that's where I started. That's where my roots are. Um, and 
no one really did anything of that nature. They everyone just had fun and and it wasn't about let's try to make money. And then as as we kind of shifted um kind of approaching more to present day, then it started to become more real as the phase guys moved from New York to Los Angeles to this big ass house and we saw that there was real money in this and then that's kind of when people came in and Fortnite and all that stuff and then now TikTok. Yeah, yeah uh like again, see my my first video wasn't even tech like on on TikTok. I literally made like the shittiest memes but they blew up <laughs> and I whether or not people would like to admit they did a meme channel at first, my channel's been the same, right? But like at the same time making making stuff that like you find funny if you laugh at it, somebody else is going to laugh at it too. But TikTok really is an interesting platform because it's not just like it's not just like post my setup and I get famous kind of thing. It's a it's a put some time into my setup and I make it look good for a video and the video may pop off now but how do I convert that video's views into numbers for my my followers? How do I convert them from this to that? Right? And that's using CTA and using uh time posting and and being building a relationship with your viewers is number 1. And and this is also why people ask for shout outs and don't understand why I won't give somebody a shout out unless they like, you know, unless they're like donating a bunch to my stream and we make a TikTok out of it and it's funny and then mm -hmm. they might get some followers off of it. And that's a good way to me for me to get back. That's different. Mm -hmm. But when you come to someone's channel and you don't do anything for them, but you say, can I have a shout out? Even if I went, hey, yo, young Jimmy, you know, here's your shout out. Go follow him. He may get one to two followers at most. And even then, and even then, he's not going to build a community off of it. It's not because it's not about the follower number. It's about the people that return back to your streams, the people that return back to your videos. It doesn't care about the follower count. Um, you know, some brands look at the follower count, but overall, if you're averaging like 700k views a video, that's baller. That's baller for your account. You're getting exposure. Even if you're getting pushed to platforms, you're still getting pushed. Like that, like 30k is a lot. 30k and above like any of those numbers those things that could be 30,000 new people that could be 30,000 followers but you just it just depends on what content you 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 know you tend to um, a lot of my content is based off follower content or uh, the PC community and the streaming community that is good because they're, I'm building both platforms I'm building that I know a little bit about computers and tech but I also know a lot about streaming and, and building relationships with streamers and building like building that communication with people mm -hmm. Um, and like, I don't think people understand that cause they don't understand that building community is important. Um, and they ask for shout outs because they want the numbers, but they don't understand what it takes to build that. Um, mm -hmm. and that's a very interesting talk topic in itself. I um, think, <laughs> I, th I think the most important thing, like if you saw someone who you thought was so underrated and, and you felt it in your heart that this person deserved more and you turned on your stream that day and then you're like, guys, I need everyone or even made a TikTok out of it. Like say, I see this really great creator. Um, I need everyone to go blow up this thing. That's way more compelling than someone like, than you turning on your TikTok and being like, Hey, this guy asked me for a shout out in my DMs. Like, can everyone go do it? Cause those, even, yeah. even if they got a hundred followers, they're not following for the content. Like they're they following because I said so. Yeah, you know, and and so it's gonna be in a hundred followers. Then you, you probably like only a small percentage is even gonna watch it, and even a lesser percentage is gonna like that content or even come back to it. Yeah, and in, in general, just come back. Like it's it's not a great concept, and and if you are someone who's listening to this and you do this, um, it's not it's not like we're blaming you for doing it. It's just kind of the wrong idea in a way if you want to create content create create good content that you want to watch and then you'll find a, a group of people who want to watch that content because they enjoy the same thing and honestly there's i get a lot of comments on videos and and people like this like i i made this tiktok it got a hundred views and i hate this and this and they are you know upset right they don't want they don't they want to see the numbers they want to see the success Oh, excuse me. Um, 
but they want to see the success, but they don't know what work it takes. Everyone tells them to work hard, but they don't know what, like how to pursue it mm -hmm. or how to get into it. But I think they need to understand, and this is why I go over this a lot in my streams when people ask me or like when we talk about this. Like when when people talk about this in my stream, you know, they they say like stuff like, "Oh, I I don't know why I can't grow. I don't know why you keep telling me to work hard. You keep telling me to make friends, and sometimes making friends isn't enough." Which, yeah, uh, quite frankly, that always isn't the case. That making friends is going to help you, but making the right friends will help you and building the right connections will help you. Now you don't always know what the right connection is, but it, it, there's a, there's a, like a mysterious force in the world that works itself out. Like an example is, I know you probably know Logan and I, uh, mm -hmm. low on TikTok as well. If I hadn't met Logan, there would have been a lot of weird things that would have changed. He wouldn't have been as motivated. I wouldn't have been as motivated like literally me and Logan grew up together on TikTok, right? He had like a, a thousand followers, 2000 followers more than me. And like, he came to my streams of when I, on my TikTok lives at like 4am when I get home from work. Right. And he would sit on there and just even talk to me and just like, he's like, Oh, this guy's smart. I want to talk to him. Right. It's that connection that I didn't even know Logan streamed at that time or even had a TikTok or even like cared to make content. I just knew him as low. Yeah. Right. And like building that, if you can look past that, right like if you look past that barrier like you say yeah you can have that moment of like oh my god I'm, I'm meeting this person i'm so excited but at the same time if you look at them as a person it's going to make you feel so much better because like an example okay is phase mew right so i went into his chat five months ago and i was like hey mew what's up dude you don't know me now but you'll know me soon and I, you know talked in his stream every day came in every like you know i'd set a time aside to go and just stream and say what's up to him and just talk to him and say what's up you know hey what's going on what's up you know get to know him better fall guys came out he loved that game we played together for the first time played some games ran it you know i was off stream i didn't care about being on stream for this i just wanted to play with it because i wanted to build that connection with Mew. yeah or, or carrie um and so i built this connection with carrie and then warzone he invited me to play warzone one night and now we've played together like every week since then. And I've had his top donors just come into my stream and donate me bits and had to help that and, and found out about me through Mew because they liked me as a creator or heard me playing with them or just like, you know, learning me and learning me in chat and like talking to me and figuring out who I was through Mew because I like play a game with them and then we like, you know, hang out and that would help Mew, and that would also help me because at the same time, people in his chat are getting to know me. Logan's chat knows me. Jake's chat knows me. Like, all these people start knowing me in different various chats, and you get to this point where you have all these friends and all these people that know you from other streams, and you start recognizing people that come into your stream because they've been in other streams you've seen. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's, like, the best way to build this web because if you do this enough, you're going to get to a point where you know so many people and so many other communities know you that they're bound to come to your stream at least once. And if you can win over that viewer, then you'll have enough and you'll have enough people that want to support you and enough people that want to further your content and, and provide for you. And that is like what you need to do to grow. Like that is like the, the, the strat. Because if you don't do that and you just think, oh, you're too ego to go play with this person or you're too ego to go play with that person, like you're going to never grow. You may grow in numbers. But you may not grow in community, and your community is what you need to grow, like, bigger, like, to get to that spot. Like, hence why, like, an example, like, all these new streamers, like, when Ninja was growing up, if you ever watched, like, the Ninja phase on Twitch, like, you ever watch back the moments of it, right? Mm -hmm. Ninja went from playing PUBG with nobody to playing Fortnite with Summit, S Shroud, everybody, because he's blowing up. And they wanted, they wanted the share of that, to mm -hmm. blow up with him, right? Tim the Tapman blew up. Dr. Lupo blew up. All these people started blowing up because of Ninja, like getting bigger on Twitch and him him making that connection, right? That that itself helped him become who he is today because of the connections he's made. And if he didn't have that, he probably wouldn't be nearly as big or nearly in that realm. Yeah. You know? And also when they 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 also made a pack to when they would have a clip, whoever they were playing with, they would tweet out that clip, they would post it on Instagram and tag everyone else. So they also had the same ideas 
to help each other grow because they were all relatively at the same point. I guess Ninja was, you know, a little bit bigger, but he still helped lift people to where they are. And that's why we see Tim the Tatman where he is. And I mean, not only solely based on Ninja, but it's it's the same concept. It's boosting everyone around you to gain yourself as well. Yeah. And that's going back to what I was saying about the win-win situation, that if you can create a win-win situation for everyone, even if the viewers don't always necessarily agree with it, it's a win-win in your book, and you just got to take it that way. And, mm -hmm. and you can't care what anybody else thinks because at the end of the day, they're not, putting, they're not the ones putting your food on your table like you are. And if yeah. you can like idolize yourself and get yourself in that position and have a backup plan when you need it and just – have all the smart stuff laid out who cares about what the end goal is you're you're getting there day by day anyway right and it's like it's not how far the journey is it's how you get there and like you know what it takes to get to that spot some people like look up to me and think i'm rich or like that i that i'm you know am out here like balling out on a budget i still <laughs> live with my parents like there's not like a just because you have 190,000 followers doesn't mean you're rich or that you um, mm. that you're going to be rich or, you know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, you can have a following, sure. but not have like money. Like you could still have a following and get sponsors every once in a while that may give you like a little bit of food on your table, <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. not, it's not life changing money unless you work like a huge company. Right. Um, so I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but it's kind of what the way I look at everything. I think it's, I think it's, just as important as you phrased it and probably even more the people don't understand that if you even just like how you and Lo did it um Lowe's a guy who you know i love his content i love i love his drive and his motivation he's he's a great he's a great guy and great creator but um he, you and him uh you said that you guys kind of found each other like way earlier correct yeah yeah do you if you, there's many people who I am at relatively the same size as um that m we motivate each other so that if one of us goes up we all go up that's what that's kind of just our friend group like that we're going to just do it that way um and that gives you op more opportunity to um to grow because you have multiple people putting in work having reaching different fan bases because you don't have the same exact followers as low. You have different, you have way different people and you, you have, you have that opportunity to give low, you know, an extra 15,000 or, and he has an opportunity to give you an extra 15,000. Like there, there's give and take that there that is really, really important. Yeah. I, I, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> That's Yeah pretty much what you said is exact <laughs> like you know it really comes down to the connections you make like logan and i will eventually be moving in together like you know with other people and so like that that if i hadn't built that connection with logan like we wouldn't be where we're at either of us i believe that logan still would have had the drive and the motivation but like i feel like we both carried each other through stuff like through the hate on tiktok and through you know through that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um it's definitely interesting um to see so yeah i i was actually gonna ask you i but you explained it before uh h on how you met mew because mew, mew i i don't know if you know this definitely not but mew's a guy that was in the cod community and before you might not uh, might have known that but um he he and i actually have some history back from like 2017 is when i met mew um I joined that jersey right there, that team, uh, Myth, Myth Gaming, and Mew was a part of it and stuff like that. You know, part of behind the scenes, and his fiance or Alyssa um, was in that team as well. So those guys are they're longtime homies, and so I was gonna ask you how you met him, but you explained it. So, but it's all right. It's yeah, a great story. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's how I met him. At least, uh, you know, playing with him and, and being in his chat, and you know, now I'm actually a mod in his channel, which yeah. is ironic that happened last night. But um, it's kind of it's just kind of dope how much everything's changed for me and other people. Um, so yeah, it's it's been an interesting ride so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, what what do you see on TikTok that is the biggest mistake that people are making, like that um, that aren't doing 
that Same aren't thing, getting right? traction like like what yeah. are wrong what's wrong with their videos or like what, what do you mean uh just kind of like advice on stuff that you see a lot um if you can Good. if you can just kind of sum something up if that's too yeah no, 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 no. That's, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so a lot of the time I, on TikTok, I see either a, them kind of just like, like they, they don't have like the skills to make the video sound and appeal to people. Does that make sense? Like, are, are you talking so about when like I watch a video, like if I'm watching a video mm -hmm. and their audio is like fucked, their camera is all over the place they're trying to do cool transitions but it doesn't look very good there's no impersonality involved there's nothing funny involved it's just them talking mm -hmm. right like that that's where i'm kind of getting at they just show their setup they're like oh this is dope I'm like that's cool and all but like i i put a lot of respect in like people that actually like take their shots and like do their, their they have a TikTok planned out and like they really care to make their content better um it, but there's people that like I see a lot where they'll go in and they'll be like, yo, can you check out this? Or they'll go into the comment section and be like, yo, check out my video. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for the fun of it, I will go check out their video to see like <laughs> what, what, you know, what mm -hmm. they're posting. Like I, I'd love to see what they say. If, they, if it's so important they got to come to my comment section, then they obviously want me to see it. So we're going to go and look at it. So I look at it and it's either one, it's a video of me, like a, quick, a Twitch clip of my channel. Or it's like something like um, them just talking to the camera, and there's not really anything funny. It's just like, "Guys, he even liked my video," or like, it, you know, it's something like it's something like that. Um, what I'd recommend is make original content. And but what I mean about original content is, and I can give an example from my personal experience, is room hacks became a trend on TikTok. Revamping your setup became a trend on TikTok. Uh, things that I in my setup that I can't live without became a trend on TikTok. Like as soon as I made all three of these trends, like literally everybody, everybody in the tech community made them. Like literally everybody. Mm -hmm. After I made it, like everybody thought that was a genius idea and went and started doing it. That's what I mean by trend. If you could start something that's funny or that's relatable for someone to want to make a video about it, like like make it in the same format, that's how you're gonna grow because you're making a funny video that people like. An example is that guy with the Arby's thing that's blowing up right now. <laughs> he literally took a video with with Arby's on his screen and said someone bought it and he bought it and it's like it's, it's broken or something with the Arby's thing. Bro, Arby's literally became a famous trend on TikTok and probably generated millions of dollars of sales mm -hmm. because of that, right? That one guy alone made his whole channel verified off of showing Arby's on his screen. So what I'm telling you guys is like don't don't just make a video because you can make a video. Make a video that will stand out and be unique. Hence why Room Hacks has one of the most viewed videos on my channel. And it, it, it still holds the number one spot in my, in my entire career. Because it literally, any brand that goes on it sells out of their product every time. And that's literally what happened. Like, you know what I mean? Like this lamp behind me, right here, mm -hmm. this lamp is not viable anywhere. Because it's from Ikea. And when I made the video, it has still to this day 8.4 million views. Damn. And that, that lamp sold out. And I've, I've seen multiple TikTokers with it after that. That was back in June. But, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, those kind of videos are what people like to see, what people like to follow. Because they think that they're a part of something because they're like, oh, this is dope. I think I, think I, I can make this in my room. This might be dope. And in that time, COVID was a thing. And people were looking at ways to, like, you know, revamp the room and this comes down to the mouse pad thing again people are in covid they want to do something new they want something new on their desk hence why i made the mouse pads like that's how i kind of like when you're saying like how did it come to be it was because of room hacks and setup uh hacks and, and those things that like pushed me to like where i'm at today right um and and that's literally how it went um because deep down i always wanted to be a streamer but i didn't know how to get there Cause that's streaming is what I loved more than making content. Like I'm bad at making YouTube videos. Like I'm not good at it. Like I can make them and they sometimes turn out okay, but I'm good at TikToks and I know what works sometimes and I know what I won't do well on, but I know that I just want to post it. Like there's things that you just have to understand becoming like becoming in this thing that people are going to be seeing your face every day. People are going to be like thousands of millions of people may see your face. And are you going to be okay with that? Like, are you going to be able to handle that mentally? Like it is a a big mental thing. 
showing mm -hmm. yourself online every day and being a well-known person, especially, even though I'm not even well-known yet, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there is a consequence to come with that. Like, you're going to get people that come into your chat or people that come in and make fun of you because of your height, your weight, your whatever, your eyes. However, whatever they can make fun of, they will make fun of it, no matter what. But you have to realize that, like, you're going to be able to push through that, and you have to if you want to be in this industry. There's no other work around it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you may get lucky like Lyric and maybe get a lucky break on streaming and, and you know, become a famous person for gameplay, but that is hardly ever happening anymore. Right now, COVID, people want personality. People want to talk to somebody. People want to understand and, and meet people. They don't want to watch somebody play a video game as much anymore on Twitch yeah. is what I'm seeing. Um, and and that's, the, that's like the advice I'd give. Um, and then the growing thing I talked about earlier is what I would say as well. Um, but yeah, those yeah. are things I would, I would explain and tell people. Who's, who's the top guy for inspiration for you? Who's like my biggest inspiration? Yeah. Well, it's hard to explain. Cause so like I have many inspirations, like people that I really look up to, um, you know, like I could name a couple because they're all kind of like influential in my life i guess you know yeah. so you know obviously my dad is definitely one uh for sure my my dad literally but like he does a lot he does a lot off, off camera though when he knows about he does a lot of work for me and, and and you know one day maybe i'll be able to like you know hire him or something <laughs> something like that you know but like he's a big inspiration for me because he does a lot of work behind the scenes and helps me on top of doing like his whole family, everything like he does, he runs everything, he runs the house. Right. Uh, but then like inspirations, like for like content creation and, and like things that would, you know, push me to do more content is Logan, um, Jake's, if you know him as well, legend daily, JM news, all those people are inspirational to me because they're my friends. But at the same time, they are people that have told me like, yes, you can do it. Like you can, you can drop everything. Like, especially Logan, like back when I worked at fire up, I hated my job. And Logan literally was telling me like, quit, like, like, don't go back, like go stream, like go stream, go like do this. Like, trust me, if you had time to put time in your stream, you would blow up. And literally like three months later, we're done. We've, we've quadrupled my average from, from, you know, from May. Mm -hmm. And like, the fact is like Logan literally was the, the, the pushing person for that. Like the reason I went full time in August was because of Logan telling me to, like he told me to, and I didn't tell anyone. Right. Like it's a very emotional topic for me. Cause it's like, it's one of those things that like really made my career push further. Like it really made me like get the fire on my ass to go for it, you know, and fuck what college says, fuck what everything else is like, just go with what you want to do. And now it's like now, you know, and, it's just fucking nuts. Like it now it's turning this whole thing where I'm running a brand, a business. I, I'm streaming twice a day. I'm able to manage, you know, myself and be my own boss. Like that is just like the American dream in itself. Um, it definitely is a really like influential thing for me, man, especially Logan, like pushing me to do it. You know, <clears throat> um, did, did you, who, who was all, or how many and how did it affect you of people telling you that this wasn't feasible? This like, how did it affect me? Yeah, like, did it affect you? Did Or were you, or or is that your motto up there all the time? Prove them wrong. So, like, so when I started to work at FireUp, this is actually kind of an emotional story, but when I, so I left Whole Foods to pursue, like, a esports organization that I worked for that was FireUp, right? And I made their, I managed their social media I like did the Twitch streams for them and I like built like all these cool things for them. Um, and when I left whole foods, all my IRLs were like, you're stupid. Like, why are you leaving a really nice company for this startup company? That's not going to go anywhere. And so like literally like they told me I wasn't going to go anywhere. They, they literally all my IRLs that I've known for years told me like, no, you're not going to do this. Like, don't do this. Like you're an idiot. Like don't do this. And so I, I said, fuck them. And literally they all dropped me that night that I left whole foods. And so, I, that night I made this sign and it's, you know, it stayed the same. And I literally said like in five months, six months, I'm going to be telling them the same thing that I proved them wrong. And then from there, like fire up happened and then TikTok happened. And then now I'm here like, you know, making more than my parents now 
And like, that's where I'm like, you know, I've caught in this point where I'm like seeing this, like I literally have done this and I'm going to keep doing it. Right. And that's kind of like that whole story of just like, you know, coming up from nothing to now having this now to be able to make more than my parents who went to college and, you know, they're a nurse and it, it, it really did change my whole perspective, like of how, like, you know, how quickly TikTok has changed my life. Um, and so, and that, and that not, a, not to flex at all. That's literally <laughs> just me explaining how, yeah, how it went good. for me. You're good. Um, you know, and that's again, not to flex at all. I literally, I never talk about money, but that is one of the things that really, got to me was like yeah i'm able to you know do this full time now like i'm able to be my own person and be free like i'm able to have this financial like freedom and do what i love and inspire a community to do the same um and it's never about the money for me it never was i just wanted to be someone you know what i mean i i felt like i was mm -hmm. always lost like trying to find out who i was or and i knew school wasn't the way to do it i i went to school a college for 2 years and um you know, I hated it. Like I, I, I didn't like it. Like I went to like photography and, and videography and then I did like cybersecurity for a year and a half and I, I really didn't like it. I didn't want to go to this because I knew that there was always something more that I just wasn't able to grasp. Like I would listen to logic and like people that I would know like that would motivate me, right? Like I listen to all these musical artists and I would be like listening to the lyrics of some songs and just like thinking about like how could I get the fuck out of this? Like how can I move past what I'm doing now? Like I don't want to be here forever. I want to be somewhere. I want to do something with my life. Like I don't want to be just a college person that went to college for three years, cybersecurity, and then fucked off in a nine to five. Like I didn't want to be that. And um so then I got to this position and it's like now I'm proving everybody wrong that I that I previously told that you know told that i couldn't do it and so yeah it's yeah it's kind of crazy um, I, could, I could have a whole past like really really passionate conversation about how much like if you want to do the nine to five route then do it because if that's what your heart truly desires then do it i want you to do what you your heart truly desires but if you don't want to do that and you're being pressured to be in that situation where you just don't like what you do every day, then I would I would really encourage you to rethink what you're doing to to get out of that situation to to pursue something that makes you happy every single day. Yeah, like literally, like people always ask me like, how do you like you know where do you work? And I'm like, I work for myself. Like I don't, uh, you know I I don't work under anybody, man. I don't have a job. This is, Twitch is my job mouse pads in my job tiktok's my job like my job as a streamer is to make sure everyone in chat is like you know having a good time and and, and and you know being on that spectrum with me like that vibe with me like that's my job and when it comes to like everything like it is it is my job 1000 percent to be in the position that i am and once i'm here i need to make sure that i retain it and that i do the best i can to to you know get a mouse pad on everybody's damn desk or like, you know, just that, that is my job like now, you know, and there's no other option. If I fail, I fail, but right now I'm succeeding. And so like, there's no, there's no fear of me like falling off. Like I don't, I don't feel like I can do it. Like I literally feel like I put myself in a position where people know who I am. They know my products, they know of me, they, whether or not they go to the stream every day, they know of me. And, um, you know that that will turn into support down the line and you sometimes you just kind of have to roll with it even if you like feel like you're gonna give up you should um but you should. are you gonna really really say that you regretted doing something you did or doing something that you loved every day like i just i can't see myself see anyone regretting that they went for it like, I see everyone regretting, I wish I would have pursued my dreams when I was younger, blah, blah, blah. But pursuing this every single day, even if you failed tomorrow, but you kept going, there, there's just no regret allowed in that. Like, because you, yeah. tr you tried your hardest. That's You deserve and you should and you owe it, owe it to yourself that you leave everything on the table and when you're sitting on your deathbed that you do not regret not going for your dreams when you're younger. 
Yeah, and it's like it for me. It's like I sit back and I kind of think about this at night, like sometimes where I'm like, I'm so blessed to be in the position I am, like that someone comes to my stream and like wants to give me money, like that that alone like literally changes my life. Like people don't understand, you know, and like it it really does get to me sometimes because like I I sit back and I really think about like damn like I was this person, however long ago, and like I I hated life and I didn't want to be. And it, like, I didn't want to be here. Like, there was no point. Like, I felt like I was always chasing something that wasn't there. And, like, now it's like I'm in this position to where I don't have to do it anymore. I don't have to chase that anymore. I just do what I do, and I, I get there now. And it's like there's not going to be content that won't be posted. Like, I'm still going to be doing the things I love. And it's like even if it doesn't lead me to great success in the future, which I hardly doubt, <laughs> Um it's it's definitely interesting man it's definitely interesting um like i'm also like sad and blessed for covid because it's like covid really changed my life for the better yeah. like I, if i wouldn't have had been laid off like not laid off but if i wouldn't have had been like you know my store had to close down and like fire up had to close down then i wouldn't be where i'm at because they reclosed down like okay so like here's an inspirational like moment from when this happened this was back in the beginning of august after we did the PC giveaway with Carter at, at, in July, um, you know, we I was still working there. And then the huge spike of COVID came back up in August. Um, and then Logan and I were on a call and we were just talking about, I'm like, yeah, damn, fire is going to close again. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Logan said, you know what? He's like, listen, he's like, bro, you right now, this is your chance. And you are out of work and it is time to literally fucking like grind. Like you need to get on this stream right now and like start making your stream good. Like make your stream good again. Like, like literally focus it. Like you told me before you've worked really hard on it before and you had to give it up because of school or whatever. But now he's like, now is your chance. If you don't take it, I'm gonna be so pissed. And I was like, you know what? You know, fuck it. I'm gonna try it. And like literally I went all into it. I posted a TikTok, three TikToks a day for like, five like almost five months now and my stream started growing because of it like i started streaming every day and since like beginning of august like literally after that day i sh i haven't missed a stream and like even if i'm doing a subathon i'm still streaming the day before for even just an hour just to make sure that i haven't broken a streak like and mm -hmm. that literally to me like meant the world because i want to be able to stream every single day even if i can stream twice a day even like that to me means the fucking world, you know? Um, and like right now in my career, I'm like two months behind Logan, if you think about it. Like right now, like I'm at Logan's spot two months ago where he was like averaging like 100 to 50 years ish, right? And now he's averaging like 400, 400, 300, right? So like for me, like I right now, it, I'm right in that position, but I'm two months behind Logan in growth. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. And that and that that motivates me because if I if I'm going to be that in 2 months, then like that would be amazing. Like that would be a a, a solid growth rate. Yeah. Um Yeah, and it's it's you know, there's only so much that Logan did, can do. And this comes down to the um this comes down to the shout out thing again. Like, you know, there's only so much that Logan can do for me. There's only so much that Jay can do for me. This is only, you know, they can give me exposure, but mm. that when that exposure runs out, there's not that much exposure to give left because their their fans know of me. But the, when their favorite creator goes live, they're gonna watch them instead, and that's where you have to go and where you have to start. Um, but yeah, that that was like you know for me all that motivation just like really took me there and really motivated the fuck out like out of me to continue this and really 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 try. Um, you know, and and that's really what push me yeah i i don't ever really talk about my myself on this podcast or like personal experience or anything i just kind of give advice but i do want to i do want to share um not only to you but to the to the viewers who are, are getting this far um which this will probably be a, a a clip on tiktok or something um a lot of people know that i uh that i'm type 1 diabetic and i was i was diagnosed right when i started the, the reason that I started this was because of that. I fell into this deep depression because 
my life changed so much so drastically so fast and um my only outlet was this and this was my only happiness um and i owe it to to everyone who supported me from the beginning and uh, in like 2015 um to keep going and that's where my motivation comes in and since i have this disease i don't i can't see myself doing something normal and everyone always says that to me they always say like but they say it in a negative light but i i take it as a positive they always say i i can't see you going to college i can't see you working in a, a, a normal job and they think that's a negative but i think it as a positive because as a positive brother don't let that don't let that th this know. this is the only thing and i like i get up every single day and i have i have one option to choose and that's happiness and this is my happiness when you text me and i get to have this great conversation with someone i i i've had the opportunity to speak with um so many great people i even had the opportunity to speak with my childhood idol phase blaze like there there's nothing crazier to me than the support and the opportunity that it's pretty much tiktok that has given me and i'm i'm only like i have three thousand followers and i i still work every day and i'm i'm more than content with where i'm at because i just get to create content and people watch and and it's amazing and I, I appreciate you coming on this podcast because of course it, it's a, a lot of this is kind of going pat. I, I feel, I don't want to say anything too crazy, but I feel like that's the start of something amazing because it all seems to be going by fast. And I feel like that's just the start of, and it will only get bigger and you know, and that only comes down to your, to your work and dedication with it. Um, you know, like I, like I tell everyone, I'm, I'm never afraid to be on a podcast. I'm never afraid to be on an interview. Like, I'm always okay with that. Like mm -hmm. I, and, and if it helps someone else's like views or helps someone, you know, you know, get that kickstart that they need for a better project or something like that. I, I'm not opposed to doing that. Um, sometimes it's hard to find time. Uh, originally when you <laughs> messaged me, I was like in the yeah. middle of the mouse pad stuff, but like, like an example, like I will always try to make it up to people when I can. Um, you know, if I, if I can't get to something right away, I try to like, you know, get back to them. And so, um, that, that in itself is, you know, crazy, man. So I applaud you for, you know, being strong and, and, and really going for a podcast. That's a really hard place to grow into. Um, but just know that like, you know, it's, it, there's not always an easy road ahead, but you'll, mm -hmm. you'll start to get like a, like a push. And when you start to get into these influential people, like, I feel like you'll start to get where you want to go. And, and I, I think you definitely have this in the bag. You just need to like, focus on what you want to do and focus on the future and what you want to grow it to. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think, I think you can definitely, I think you can definitely like, you know, push that yourself and, um, you just, you just got to do it, man. I think, I believe in you, you know, um, I definitely think you have some talent and, um, with your, with your podcast and I feel like you could grow it to a really substantial amount. Um, so keep doing what you're doing and, you know, keep rolling with the punches, bro. I, I feel like you got this, you know? I appreciate that. Um, we we just hit over an hour. Um, I I appreciate this so so much. Uh, as you could imagine, it's a little difficult to get some people on the podcast, but but when we do, I make sure to give you guys amazing guests. Um, I have spoken a little bit to low, and we might be getting low on the podcast. He said he would be down. I don't want to take away from people who are going for phase five because they've got a lot on their plate right now. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah. Um, I I can always hook it up as well. I could probably tell him that you know yeah. you want to be on his podcast. He he'll definitely be down. Um, I I I don't. You don't have to do that. This isn't. Um, nah, don't worry about it. You know, I I could probably tell him and be like, yo, I was on his podcast. I he's a dope dude. Like I I don't mind doing that. Like it, you know, and especially if you want Carter, I have Carter on I, dial as well. I have Carter on dial as well. He just he follows me on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's dope, man. That's dope. He, he, I, I don't, I don't think he's interested. <laughs> Let's just say that. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. Hey, I, I'm hoping to be interested. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that. All right, uh, I mean, you guys can, um, follow Aiden. Uh, where can they see you? Or follow? Uh, Twitch, TikTok, all gutsy Aiden. Literally G U T Z Y A I D E N. 
uh, literally on any platform, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. So um, I stream every single day at 4 p.m. PST mainly on Twitch. So if you ever want to stop by, that'd be dope. Um, I really appreciate you having me on, man. Um, it's dope, dope, dope conversation. Really, you know, I'm happy to hear that you're doing amazing things and talking to amazing people. Um, so yeah, man, uh, I hope that it all went well and I hope I was a genuine guest to have on the podcast. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. um, that's dope, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's going to be it. Uh, you make sure you guys follow Aiden. Uh, if you guys are watching in the, on the YouTube podcast, you guys can uh, go in the description and uh, find all of his links there. Um, and make sure you guys check out his TikTok. And make sure you guys are following him for the next drop of Mouse Paths. We're gonna try to sell it out yes, in five minutes this time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, man, that'd be dope. That'd be mm-hmm. dope. But thank you, man, so much for helping me on, man. Um, mm-hmm. no problem. Yeah. Thanks for this amazing mouse pad in front of me, too. Of course, of course. <laughs> Anytime. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the For You podcast hosted by Texture. Uh, guest is Aiden, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.